Then I'm going to mention this as well, right? This is something I mentioned before regarding Nina Kravitz. I think this is pretty interesting because it throws up an interesting challenge here. So this is courtesy of RA and it features Avalon Emerson announcing her indie leading project, Avalon Emerson and the Charm. It says Avalon Emerson has announced a new indie leading project. Um, the first single, Sandrail, sorry, Sandrail Silhouette, is out on Friday. So already out now if you're listening to this. Um, on Another Dove, a new label from the US star, US artist in 1893, Nick Tasker, co-produced by Emerson and Bullion. The track combines jangly, melancholic guitars with cello and Emerson's wistful vocals. The seed of Sandrail started in LA a few years ago. My wife Hunter strumming on her jazz master and me plucking some chords on my um, Hydra synth, Emerson said. I I brought the snippets into the studio with Bullion and we laid out a few minutes of it and added some drums and I wrote some vocal melodies and lyrical um, thoughts of things that were on my mind lately. Then a couple of days later, my old friend Arizona Kevian, Kevian come into the studio to add some cello to another song and we played in the Sandro sketch and nearly instantly he wrote the cello parts. She added to me, this song is about scale, scales to my time and how something that seemed so important defining a long time ago might not really matter that much now Sandra Silhouette follows oh, 0606 Emerson's recent EP on AD93 and Eternal September a collaborative project with Anunku as A and A now I've heard this track and I can say you know objectively speaking from my taste I think it's very average and um, a lot of this comes from me just maybe being um, a little bit having more experience listening to indie music prior than getting into dance music i think i've had the benefit and the luxury and the opportunity to be kind of you know have decent i feel like musical education in terms of the type of stuff i'm into i don't necessarily care about genres or whatnot as long as it's good i'm going to listen to it and i feel like that approach has kind of served me well when it comes to djing because i feel like in general i'm pretty well rounded in terms of my approach and my ability to kind of put together coherent and good sets and recognize what's good and what isn't but one thing i have recognized of rule is like i think in dance music there are many people involved in it in electronic music specifically who maybe aren't that real plugged in or have great taste when it comes to anything outside of the genre that they play so when they do venture into becoming an artist and trying to become you know tr trying to stand in, in front of a microphone and maybe do it that way instead of doing a dj thing it can come across a bit corny a little bit a little bit cringe a little bit um just badly done and i think the first person i think of is you know nina kravitz debuting her um you know artist kind of persona i think it was like coachella or something right and it was absolutely horrifying and i think over time it got a little bit better and i think her recent track she put out where she's like frolicking somewhere the beach was a lot better than that first performance but it was still bad but then as a dj i also look at it and i think to myself i understand or i can definitely sympathize with the with the dilemma that's kind of going through you right if you're an artist or if you're a dj where you maybe think djing is quite limiting and it's quite boring at some regard if you regard if you appreciate at the top level i think of you know seeing flipping dixon at coco and i was actually standing there looking at it, thinking it must be horrible if you're dixon if you're that level where essentially you kind of have to play the hits people are there kind of expecting you to play your well-known hits and stuff you can't just come there and do like a crappy thing you have to kind of you can't sorry you can't go there and kind of test yourself and play new fresh tunes you kind of have to deliver the hits and the hits are what everyone's kind of known you from playing and boiler rooms and other kind of sets over there so you kind of you know got these golden handcuffs on in terms of your sets and the music that you play and you're kind of constricted to it because obviously you're playing other people's music also and also you don't want to be that dj that kind of just only plays their own productions because that's another level of wankery no one wants to be associated with so you want to try and challenge yourself and open up your horizon and try something new and fresh and interesting you try and be an artist and do that thing and it doesn't necessarily sit and hit either maybe you don't really have it maybe it's an evolution it's going to take time but it also it will take time it's not instant and you know sometimes the music unfortunately if somebody does produce something quite terrible more often than not because of the amount of stuff coming out you're probably not going to give the second thing they put out a chance because you remember the first thing you listened to was absolutely shocking so when i heard this track Sandra silhouette the first thing i thought about was that it was quite forgettable it wasn't anything quite interesting about it but then i also think to myself like it must be challenging because you know avalon emerson's like at the pinnacle at the top of her craft when it comes to djing definitely one of the top 
DJs out there and definitely somebody that a lot of people are big fans of you have to look at her flipping mixes online and stuff and streams to see the numbers of people who watch them um, the comments are always incredibly positive and nice because she I guess she just comes across as a very nice human being so people kind of connect with her very well in that regard maybe the approach to the style the music the mixing style whatever it is something about her people just love as a DJ that's always not going to resonate as a musician or as an artist it's not always going to be the same thing especially I would imagine because they're different crowds as much as I would say I'm somebody that listens to all music and go to all different types of festivals and whatnot and I don't really care about genres there are definitely people who are way more into indie and alternative type music and don't care about dance music or church music in the slightest and when they hear what you're doing and then they hear some you know random band that they don't know about in some dingy bar somewhere where they bought tickets and dice playing much better music than you it's going to be hard to kind of equate or figure out in their head why you're on Coachella and this band is playing in Old Blue Last for free on a Wednesday so that's the problem the competition in that field is so so deep and I don't necessarily think this track or this project maybe is at that kind of level but will it take time to get there maybe um will it eventually get there maybe but i also understand and see again having listened to dixon play at coco and got completely bored out of my skull and just staring at him playing the same records i've heard him play every single other time i've not every single time but you know the similar sort of sound i've heard him play it also made me think and have sympathy for the popular well-known dj out there like the solomons the harveys um you know the seth truckers and stuff it must be a little bit exhausting after a while because people are expecting a certain sound for you a certain type of set you obviously don't want to disappoint them you just want to get help to have their money's worth and you also just might be tired and going to auto drive um and just kind of and you know just do the bare minimum and kind of play what you know works and kind of get out there and go back to doing what you actually enjoy doing so maybe that is what spurned this project and maybe you know you should just kind of do the things you want to actually do and hope they kind of figure out and not just be kind of shackled to things that you don't like because that's the that's another kind of horror as well right like where you're really talented at something but you don't necessarily love it or that you become successful at something but you don't necessarily have passion that can be its own type of horror so I could definitely understand that going forward but for me it was very forgettable i didn't really like anything about it and i kind of turned it off pretty quickly after listening to the first two minutes or so so i'm not really sure where it's going to go but again you never know it may kind of progress and go forward from there so big up avalon emerson regardless big up avalon emerson regardless